My name is Giovanna Frigny, and uh, I just completed my PhD in archaeometallurgy at uh, the University of Sheffield. I do a lot of experimental work out here at Healy City Farm. Today we were casting some uh, replicas of Roman brooches that are in the collection of Weston Park Museum. The uh, process I'm using is called lost wax casting, where I make a uh, clay mold that fits around the wax and then melt the wax out so that there's a void inside the mold that exactly the shape of the, uh, the brooch. So the next step is uh, to melt the, uh, the metal in the crucible in uh, the little furnace there and pump away with the bellows. And uh, the metal gets melted, poured into the molds, and then break it open. And here we have a replica of the uh, fibula 2,000 years later. Up until modern times, uh, lead was added to bronze. And that doesn't mean that it's toxic or unsafe but a small amount of lead, maybe 5% or so, will make the bronze much more fluid and easy to pour. When you see these brooches in a case, you don't think about that it's part of a community and that people made these. And then you, know, you start to think about who owned these? You know, who made these? How did they get from that place 2,000 years ago to where it was dug up and put into a museum. There's all sorts of ways that you can build a furnace and the problem is, is that uh, you don't find many of them archaeologically. Uh, what you do find in archaeology is below the ground. So when you find a, a little furnace like this, what you find is just the imprint. Uh, little spills of metal, some uh, a clay base, or maybe the, uh, the edge of where the furnace was. The type of furnace I like to build, it's called in archaeology, is a perforated clay slab. And it fits right inside the, the furnace. And it's got about six or eight holes around the edges. And what happens is the two year, that's the part of the bellows that goes into the furnace, pushes the air underneath that, it circulates around and then comes up through this little clay slab. The charcoal and the crucible are on top of that and so you get an even heat all around. But experimental archaeology isn't really about replicating things or reenactment, what you have is a, a question and the experiments are designed to answer a question. Part of it is to just understand the process. How were these made and what was involved in making them? Also, the ones in the museum are, they're very nice, but they've got this greenish brown patina on them that will be there forever. But that's not what people had. What they had was bright, shiny gold, silver, you know, jewelry like we've got today. You know, it was Roman bling. This is a very small furnace. I've got small crucibles here. But uh, even in the Iron Age, they, uh, they did make larger crucibles and, and had larger production. Once we broke out and opened the mold, you can see how I made the, uh, the wax. There's the, uh, the brooch itself, but then you've got all these wires that uh, come off that uh, were used to feed the, the metal to the different parts of the brooch. Uh, these are called sprues and uh, you also have, you, you have to have one at the top but also you have to have it at the bottom because air needs to move out of the mold so if you just had metal going straight in there might be an air pocket at the bottom and then you'd have a, an incomplete casting. So by having multiple screw, sprues, you know that the metal is going to fill the mold entirely and come back up to the top. The next step is to cut the sprues off, saw them off, and then after that, it's gonna have all these rough edges from, from that. And also, it's a, 
It's not entirely smooth from the castings, so we're going to have to sand it and polish it. And in Roman times, uh, that wasn't much, you know, modern times we can have an electric wheel that we grind away with and all of that, but in Roman times, you would have had uh, some sort of abrasive, ab like corundum or sand even, a leather cloth, and you sit there and you rub it until it's, you know, it's all sanded away. And I was amazed when I saw the pins in the museum because usually they're just kind of all corroded into one massive piece, but they, they had pins that swung free. That's such a rare thing. And also, a lot of fibula are designed to have a, a pin that's on a spring. And these are more, much more like modern pins that, uh, where you have a hinge and a pressure plate to keep it in place. In order to finish the pin, what I'll be doing is taking a, a small piece of bronze, hammering it out into a, a wire, long thin wire, and with a tab on the end that's just like the ones in the museum, and then drilling through that, and then riveting a pin that goes through the, the round end of the brooch, there's kind of a tube end on it, and uh, fit the pin in there, rivet, put a rivet through that, holds it in place, and then it can swing free, and then uh, slip into the catch, where it'll hold it in place and it won't fall off your clothes.